Idem potency means that an operation can be performed multiple times without changing the outcome beyond the initial application. It is like pressing an elevator button repeatedly. The first press sends a request and the subsequent presses don't alter the result. Idem potency is a superpower for software developers, especially when dealing with complex systems like PayPal. In this video, you will discover how payment providers like PayPal use clever tricks to keep your transactions safe. We will also look into clever strategies like exponential backoff and retries that payment providers use to handle failed payments and ensure your purchases go through smoothly. By the end of this video, you will have solid understanding of the details of how item potency can save the day by preventing those duplicate transactions and keeping your system running smoothly. So let's get started. Distributed systems are complex networks of interconnected services. Communication failures, network latency, and retries are common. Item potency ensures that even if an operation is executed multiple times due to these issues, the system remains consistent. For example, in payment processing, if a customer clicks pay button twice, maybe due to slow loading, a non-idempotent operation can potentially lead to two transactions. To ensure it's idempotent, the payment gateway can generate an item potency key for the transaction. So, if the same key is submitted multiple times, the gateway recognizes the duplicate and only processes the payment once, preventing accidental overcharges. In my video Payment Gateway and Payment Processors, I have provided a detailed explanation of their functions. That video offers a step-by-step -step breakdown of what happens when a customer makes a payment from the beginning to end. Now, Think of item potency keys as unique identifiers for operations. They can be random strings, UUIDs, or any value that can distinguish one request from another. When a client sends a request with an item potency key, the system stores it along with the operation result. If the same key is received again, the system can immediately return the stored result without re-executing the operation. PayPal and other payment providers use item potency keys extensively to prevent duplicate payments. Here is a simplified flow. The client, for example, a merchant website, sends a payment request to PayPal with an item potency key. PayPal checks if it has processed a request with the same key before. If the key is new, PayPal processes the payment and stores the key with the result. And if the key exists, PayPal retrieves the stored result, such as success or failure, and returns it to the client, preventing a duplicate charge. Companies like PayPal explicitly state in their developer guides that item potency keys are required for certain types of requests. For example, payment creation or maybe processing refunds. They in fact provide code examples demonstrating how to include item potency keys in API calls using their SDKs or libraries. They offer best practices for generating unique item potency keys such as UUIDs or universal unique identifiers. Here is an example of how a PayPal SDK might be used by a client or merchant to include an item potency key in a payment creation request. The PayPal SDK here is imported for easy interaction with the API. An order create request object is created to represent the payment creation request. The details of the payment such as intent, amount or currency are defined in the request body. A unique item potency key is generated in this example using the UUID v4 function from a UUID library. Now you could use your other methods to create a unique key such as combining timestamps with random strings. And then the PayPal request ID header is set to the generated item potency key. The client.execute request method then sends the request to the PayPal API including the item potency key in the headers. Now the key takeaway here is that the SDK abstracts the low level details of API communication making it easier to include item potency keys. PayPal uses PayPal request ID header for item potency keys, but other APIs may use different header names, for example, just item potency key. Now remember to handle potential errors such as duplicate key errors, which can be handled using HTTP 409 conflict that is in your code to gracefully manage retries or inform the user. Now let's dive deep into how PayPal processes a client's request like this with an item potency key to ensure item potency. PayPal's API endpoint receives the payment creation request from the client. The system extracts the item potency key, in this case PayPal request ID, from the request headers. And then PayPal first checks its in-memory cache, for example Redis, for the item potency key. If found, it indicates that a previous request with the same key was processed. If not found in the cache, PayPal checks its persistent storage 
may be a relational database to see if it has processed a request with that key before. If a duplicate key is found either in the cache or database, PayPal retrieves the stored result of the previous request such as success, failure or maybe pending and returns it directly to the client. This prevents the operation from being executed again, ensuring item potency. Now, if no duplicate is found, the request is treated as new. And if the request is new, PayPal executes the payment creation operation, for example, authorizing the payment or capturing funds. It then stores the result of the operation, be it success, failure or pending, along with the item potency key in its cache and database. This is crucial for handling potential future retries. PayPal then finally sends a response back to the client, including success, failure, or pending. If the operation was successful, the response includes details of the created payments, for example, payment ID. And if the operation fails, the response includes an error code and message explaining the reason. And if the operation is still in progress, for example, in case of asynchronous processing, the response indicates the pending status. Now, when a payment fails, it could be due to transient issues like network glitches, temporary service outages, or insufficient funds. In such cases, retrying the payment after a short interval might succeed. However, simply retrying without considering item potency can lead to duplicate payments if the original request was actually processed but the response was lost. PayPal combines item potency keys with intelligent retry mechanisms to address this challenge. For certain type of failures, example network timeouts, PayPal might attempt an immediate retry of the payment request with the same item potency key. This is often done transparently to the client and can quickly resolve transient issues. And if immediate retries fail or are not suitable, PayPal employs exponential backoff. This means the time interval between retries gradually increases with each subsequent attempt. This approach reduces the load on PayPal system and gives time for the underlying issue to resolve. For example, retrying after 1 second, 2 seconds, 4 seconds, or after 8 seconds. PayPal also sets a maximum limit on the number of retries for a particular payment. This prevents endless retry loops that could overload the system and frustrate users. And the limit might vary depending on the type of failures and other factors. Throughout the retry process, PayPal consistently includes the same item potency key in each request. This ensures that even if multiple retries are processed due to network delays or other issues, the payment is only executed once. If a retry encounters a duplicate key error, PayPal knows that the original payment was already successful and can simply return the previous result to the client. PayPal also carefully handles errors during retries. If a payment ultimately fails after multiple attempts, it informs the client, or in this case the merchant, with the appropriate error code and message. The merchant can then decide how to proceed, for example notifying the customer or maybe try different payment method. Item potency keys have a lifespan, after which they expire to prevent the system from becoming overloaded with the data. While the specific expiration time frame for item potency keys can vary between payment service providers, a common practice is to set this period to 24 hours. This duration is often a balance between giving enough time for clients to retry failed transactions, maybe due to network issues or other errors, and preventing the system from holding onto keys for too long, which could impact database performance and storage. For example, Stripe specifies the item potency keys are automatically removed from the system after 24 hours. These policies ensure that if a request is retried using the same key after related periods, it will be treated as a new request, with no risk of referencing a previous transaction outcome. Now, some of the additional considerations here can be PayPal's SDK that might also incorporate retry mechanisms on the client side. For example, in the merchant's website or app, to complement PayPal's internal server-side retries. PayPal might also offer merchants some level of control over retry settings. For example, the maximum retries or backoff intervals through their API or developer tools. And again, PayPal continuously monitors retry patterns to identify potential issues with their systems or integrations. If retry rates spike abnormally, it might trigger alerts for investigation and action. By combining item potency keys with a well-designed retry strategy, PayPal strikes a balance between ensuring payment success and preventing duplicate transactions, even in the face of transient failures. Item potency keys represent a fundamental innovation in digital payments, ensuring transactions are executed once and thereby enhancing the security and user experience.